Hello, and welcome to the BYU Family History Library webinar series. We're glad you could join us today. I'm Bryant, and I'll be your host for this webinar. Please make sure your microphones and web cameras are disabled during the presentation to provide for a smooth recording. If you have technical difficulties during the webinar, please use the chat box and I can address your concerns. You are welcome to use the chat box during the webinar for comments and insights. However, all questions will be addressed at the end of the presentation. Our upcoming webinars, or our next webinar is um, First World War Internment Camps with Hannah Bell, and that'll be Saturday, uh, May 2nd at 11 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time. Um, if you'd like to access a previous recording, please visit our webinar index on our webinar on our website or search on our YouTube channel. All of our webinars are recorded and uploaded by the following Monday for your convenience. We also post links to recordings and other updates on our Facebook and Twitter accounts. For today's webinar, we're pleased to hear once again from Catherine Grant, who will be giving a presentation on simple, simple tips for writing life sketches in Family Tree. After years on the sidelines, um, Catherine began doing family history and discovered that she loved it. Her specialty is helping new family historians find success and maybe even avoid some of the mistakes she's made. Catherine teaches Sunday classes at the BYU Family History Library. She also presents at Riverton, Utah Saturday seminars and other family history events. Her column on family history ran in the Nauvoo Times for about a year and is still available online. In addition, she is a regular contributor to the Family Search blog. Catherine works as a technical writer and instructional designer with a focus on usability and process improvement. Besides family history, she loves uplifting music, thought-provoking books, and springtime. And if Catherine is ready, then we'll turn the time over to her. Great. Brian, thank you so much. Let's just get the screen up here. Okay, hopefully you're able to see that screen. Welcome, everybody. We're so glad that you could join us for this webinar today. This is actually a really fun one. Uh, it's a topic that's not covered that often, and so I hope that, that you'll find this useful. Let's take a look at what we'll be covering today in our webinar. First of all, where and what is a life sketch? Next, why would you even want to write one? After that, we'll give you some easy tips. And then finally, we will actually have a hands-on experience writing a life sketch for one of your ancestors. So we haven't ever tried anything like this in a webinar before. I would be really curious to get your feedback. It would be good to know if it, you felt it worked well, what maybe could have gone better, and would you like to see something like this again? So let's go ahead and dive in. So where and what is the life sketch? It might sound backwards to start with where, but I felt it would be helpful because of the context. So where the life sketch is, is at the top of any family tree person page. As for what it is, it's just very simply meant to be a brief summary of a person's life. By brief, we we mean that it's limited to 10,000 characters. Now, if you're like me, I had no clue what that would equal out to in words or paragraphs. So I did a little computation and it turns out that 10,000 characters is about 1,500 words. That may still not be that meaningful, but if we consider that on average, a paragraph might be about 100 words, then we're talking about 15 paragraphs max but that is a max, it can definitely be shorter. Shorter is fine. Another question that comes up when we talk about life sketches is how do they compare to the document or the story that is on the memories tab? So I thought it would be helpful to just kind of run through that quickly. As we mentioned, the location of the life sketch is at the top of any person page. It's a brief summary. We've got our 10,000 characters or 15 paragraphs. People ask, can you attach photos? And the answer is actually no in a life sketch. In fact, you can't do any kind of formatting at all. It's just straight text. No bold, no italics, no photos, just text. And it's, as we'll see later on, it's uh, you get an online form and you just enter it in the online form. So how does that compare 
to the document. The, that's a feature of memories. So the document, of course, is found on the memories tab and it has multiple purposes. It can be anything from a single incident, it can be a photo, a document, a complete bio. It is limited, I found out, for those of you who know Beth Ann Wiseman, who has been our expert on past memories uh, webinars, I checked with her and she said that the limit on documents that you can upload is 15 megabytes. So that, for a PDF file, that's actually not that long, but it's enough at least to get a, a bio in and definitely enough for a photograph or, or a document such as a birth certificate or something. Can you include photos when you upload a document? And yes, absolutely. If they're part of the PDF, then they are uploaded with it. And then the format is either a PDF file or any of the accepted image file types, which are BMPs, bitmaps, PNGs, pings, uh, let's see, what are the other ones? TIFF, and I think there's one other one I'm forgetting, but they're on the FamilySearch website. When So when you try to upload a document, it will tell you, did I say JPEG? That might have been the other one. So it will tell you the four acceptable um, file formats for images and then also PDFs. So then how does that compare to the story, which is also found on the Memories tab. And the story is also multi-purpose. It can be a single incident to a complete bio. And on that one, you're limited to 15 megabytes of text, which is actually quite a lot. Probably nobody would ever upload, or excuse me, not upload, here you input it in a form. Probably nobody would ever type 15 megabytes of text into a story. So I would say don't even worry about the limits as far as that goes. And then can you attach photos? Yes, you can attach photos to a story. So those are, oh, and it's typed in an online form. So if you're wondering what to use when, hopefully this little table would help you make that determination. And for our purposes today, a live sketch is basically just meant to be what it sounds like, a pretty brief summary of a person's life. No fluff, no fanciness, no photos, no formatting, just a brief summary. So why would we want to create a life sketch? I would guess that most of us have never done that. I don't think it's that common and that's probably because we don't necessarily see the value. So what is what are some of the valuable things about creating a life sketch? Well, for one thing, it's extremely visible. It's right there, as you saw, right at the top of the page, the main page that people see when they first sign on. So they don't have to switch to the Memories tab to see a story or a document. They just see that life sketch right there at the top of the page. And then also, as interesting as this sounds, it appears that life sketches can help prevent bad merges and incorrect changes. I've tried to think about why that might be, and I think there's two reasons. One is purely psychological. So when I get to a page and I see that it's got a life sketch, my first thought is, oh, someone has taken care with this person. It looks like they've done a thorough job because they've got the life sketch and, and maybe I look at other things, they've got dates and places, but a life sketch just tends to make you think, wow, somebody's been working on this, somebody cares about this person. And so I think it's psychological that people are less likely to make changes. But then another reason is that if you document key facts in the life sketch, it's kind of a second witness. Sure, those key facts may be in the vital section or down in the family member section. So there's dates and places and relationships. But if you double up and put those in the life sketch, I think it that is also something that makes it less likely that somebody's going to come in and make um, erroneous changes. The last reason, and I think that this may actually be the most important reason, is that a life sketch helps you get to know the person better. It's so interesting that in the act of writing that life sketch, you come to know that person. For me, I think that is the biggest benefit. And we'll see an example in just a minute of actually writing a life sketch about somebody that I completely didn't know. I had never met them. They um, lived in a different time period, in a different place. But I'll show you how writing the life sketch really gave me a better understanding of that person, even though I'd never met them. 
I love what Elsa said. She's a 14-year-old as of uh, the recording of this webinar. She's 14, and she's in my stake. And I had helped her learn to do family history, just a very bright, wonderful young woman. And on her own initiative, she wanted to write a life sketch. I had never suggested it to her because I don't normally suggest that to teenagers that I start helping. Um, but she noticed it on the page, and she said, hey, what's this? I, I think I'd like to do this. And so I just explained to her briefly what it was, and she wrote a life sketch right there on the spot. When I asked her about it, she said this. Uh, I share this quote with her permission. She said, I like writing life sketches because it's really cool to get to know your ancestors and also to share about their lives with others. So I love that she wasn't just actually thinking about herself. She was thinking, hey, I could do something nice for other people who come to visit this page in Family Tree. So Elsa's 14, but I think she's a great example to all of us. Okay, let's go over some easy tips for writing a life sketch. First of all, I would say don't stress. Now, I can't see you raise your hands, but how many of you stress when somebody says anything to do with writing? That would probably be like 99% of us, and maybe that stems from times that we were in grade school or high school and we got back an essay and it had red marks all over it and maybe a, a not so good grade. And so we come to think of writing as something that is painful and something that, oh, we just aren't any good at. We can't do that. We don't have the talent. Only talented people do that. And I, uh, as a writing teacher, actually, I, I taught writing at BYU. I'm here to tell you that that is totally false. I have almost never met a person who couldn't be a good writer. We just have to have something that we care about. And a life sketch can be something that you care about. So I would say, if the thought of writing something stresses you out, just throw that stress out the window and instead focus on the fact that you are paying a tribute to somebody on your family tree and just write from your heart and it's going to be great. It does not have to be grammatically perfect. And besides that, we've got spell checkers, we've got grammar checkers. So I'd say don't worry about that. Just write from your heart and write as a way to honor this person. Next thing, you've got your choice of either writing directly in Family Tree on that form that we're going to see in a few minutes, or you can just use your favorite writing app and copy it over. So you could do it in Google Docs. You could do it in Evernote. You can do it in Notepad. You could just write it wherever you want if you're not comfortable using the form, although the form is really simple. I'll show you an example of that again shortly, but I would say don't worry, you know, if you're not comfortable using the form, use what you're comfortable in and just copy it over when you're ready. And as I kind of insinuated before, you do not have to have met the person. Now, it's nice if you did. For instance, you can write a life sketch about a parent or a grandparent that you've actually met in person. But you'd be surprised at how well you can get to know somebody through sources. And we're going to see an example of that. It might be helpful to you to make a quick outline before you even start writing. So one way to make an outline is just to list key events of that person's life in chronological order. So a birth, a christening, a marriage, a death, that kind of thing. Um, that can provide a framework for you to write the little life sketch. And then also, if possible, it's nice to comment on key attributes. An example is if you've seen uh, military registrations for the United States, you notice that often it will include a physical description. So you can say so-and-so had blue eyes and he was about 5'7 and he, I always kind of smile when I read the complexions because we don't really talk that way anymore that I'm aware of, but they'll say something like, oh, he had a ruddy complexion or he had a smooth complexion. And it's just fun, you know, you get an idea of what that person looked like. There can be other, uh, for instance, in censuses, you might see an unusual occupation. So if possible, you can add a little interest to your life sketch by including some of those things beyond just the dates and places. So now I wanted to walk through an example of a life sketch for Walter Graby Chambers, um, part of my family. I actually found him through descendancy research. And so you notice he does not have a life sketch. And so I know nothing about this 
man. I never met him. I didn't know his family. I'm really, really starting from scratch here to write a life sketch. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at the sources. There aren't many. There's only three on this page. And granted, I could probably find a few more if I looked. But let's start with what we have. So we've got two christening records, actually. If you look here, they're both exactly the same thing. So we've just got a christening record. And then we've also got the 1911 census. Let's take a look at what kind of facts we can cull from those two records. So I actually want now to turn this over to you. I'm going to bring up the christening record. And then if you could, in the chat, go ahead and just type what you see on this screen that could potentially be included in a life sketch. And so let's take maybe about 30 minutes to, um, or not minutes, 30 seconds to uh, just look at what you could see that might be included in a live sketch. And go ahead and enter that in the chat if you see anything, and if not, that's fine. So Frank says you can use all this information, absolutely right. Colby says names of parents, excellent. Charlene says christening and birth date, yes. That's great. That's the religion, yes. Mother's name, parents' birth and christening, the residence, places, parents, yes. That's fantastic. Yes, Charlene, the church. That's, that's particularly interesting because I could actually go to Google Maps and look at this church online in satellite view. And I've actually done that before. It, brought tears to my eyes, to be honest, to be able to see on a satellite view the very church where one of my family members was christened as a child. So you caught everything that I was thinking of. Uh, basically, you've got the christening date and location, and the uh, and including the church. You've got the birth date, and you've also got the parents' names. So, and yes, we do know, as several people have noted, this is a christening from an Anglican or Church of England record. So we know what church they belong to as well. So thank you, everybody. Oh, look at Ginny. Ginny, awesome. Ginny wrote in just a, a brief example of what you could put in a life sketch just based on this one record. So do you see how easy this can be? I hope it seems, if you felt intimidated, I hope that you feel less intimidated now. And, and hopefully, uh, you know, so I, and I don't want to sound like everybody is intimidated about writing, but I noticed as a writing teacher, it seemed like almost everybody was, and maybe it was just because they were in the class. But anyway, writing is something that we, I, I really feel that we don't need to be intimidated about. And so let's look now at the 1911 census. Now, this one might be a little more intimidating just because of that old handwriting, but it does get easier as, as we go, uh, as we get used to it. So one thing I did want to point out, well, I wanted the same question again. Look at this and tell me what from this you could put in a life sketch. And then also there's kind of a little freebie down here. You notice that this says links, which stands for Lincolnshire, and then Lincoln, so it's actually the county first and then the city. This is where Walter was born. It's actually way off here to the right hand side, but it didn't fit on the slide. So I put it down here at the bottom and it's kind of a freebie that yes, you could include the birthplace. But what else could you include from this census? What do you notice that could potentially be interesting to put in a life sketch? Yes, Peggy, they lost three children. Lola says ages, when they married, the family members. Oh my goodness, I did not notice that, that Frank notices that he is the first son on here. Uh, Beverly says parents, sibling, going to school, ages, relationships, absolutely right. Yes, census record, Charlene comments, um, the place of the census, what the father did. Jenny noticed that also. So yes, there is just a bunch of information on the census. So yes, Lola commented, look at the neighbors. Ben commented on when the uh, woman was married or when the couple was married so that you could find the woman's maiden name on FreeBMD. And actually um, at this time period, 
it wouldn't, for any of these children, you'd have to actually go to the GRO, but it's the same concept. Uh, the General Register Office site gives mother's maiden names before 1913, whereas FreeBMD, I believe, only gives them after 1913. Ben, correct me if I'm wrong on that. So, uh, yeah, Charlene says look for relatives, 20, 2740, I love that, says siblings. So, yeah, there is just a wealth of information on here. So, just to kind of summarize what we said, I'm going to close the chat and then show the call outs. So, he's one of 11 children. His father was a laborer, which means basically he probably did some kind of manual work, like working in fields or working in mines or working in a factory or something like that. So he probably wasn't highly educated and he probably had to work very, very hard to support his family. He, uh, Walter, attended school, which was actually a very cool thing for back then, and it wasn't necessarily that common, so it was a big deal for a youngster to be able to go to school. Oop, trying to get the slide to advance, and then I didn't, I went too far. And then the last thing, of course, we know that he was born in Lincoln, Lincolnshire, which fits with the information we saw on the christening record because he was christened in Lincoln in St. Saint, Saint Faith's. What a great name for a church, right? St. Faith's in Lincolnshire. So let's do a quick summary of the information that we have been able to find from just two records. So we found the birth and the christening dates and locations. We know more about the family. The parents were George Henry and Sarah Jane. And we also know that he was one of 11 children. And I didn't note this on here, but yes, one of the uh, viewers noted that three of those children had died by the time of the 1911 census. And then finally, we know a little bit about their activities and occupations. The dad was a laborer and Walter went to school. So if I wanted to start and put that in a life sketch, I could do something like this. I go to Walter's person page and I click add under life sketch and I get this form. And so in this case, I'm just going to type the facts. Uh, it doesn't have to be Shakespeare. I can just write it out. Although on the other hand, there's also nothing wrong with putting a little bit of interest in it. So here I just noted his name, I said who his parents were, I noted his birth date, birthplace, christening date, christening place, one of 11 children, dad a laborer, and in 1911 he was at school. He was born on the 10th of December, so that's 15 days before Christmas. So that's kind of cool, this family would have had a Christmas baby, and so perhaps I could comment on that. I may want to note that at the time of, uh, at, by the time the 1911 census was taken, that three of his siblings had passed away. So I just write what I know, and then I'm ready to click save, and I've saved that life sketch. But it's actually not hard to look for a little information. You notice that it took us, what, maybe five minutes max to review those two documents, those two sources, and come up with actually quite a bit of information for a life sketch. So, and I have to tell you, when I was preparing this webinar, I had not written this life sketch. So when I got to this point, I thought, oh, that would be really cool if I could just quickly find a marriage of children, occupation, death, just a little more to flesh out that life sketch. So here's one of my favorite things, what I like to call a logo search. It's not the official name, but I just, I just like it. So what happens, for those of you who might not be familiar with this, is over on the right-hand side of the page, you've got these logos. They go to partner sites, uh, Family Search Partners, and if you click, well, except the first one, which is Family Search, but if you click any one of these, it will grab the information off the page and automatically do a search using that information. So it's a great way to find a uh, applicable records pretty quickly. So in this case, earlier I had used Ancestry and we'd found, well actually I take that back, the christening was from Family Search, and the image that I showed you for the census was actually from Ancestry. This time I'm going to try find my past and actually most of these sites contain a lot of the same records. They all have the census. They overlap quite significantly on christening records. 
but you'll find that each of them has records also that the other partner doesn't have. So it is use, it's useful to try multiple sites. So in this case, I'm going to click on Find My Past, and this is what I came up with. So I'm again going to open it up to the audience and tell me what you see on this on these search results that gives us more information about Walter's life or about what we could put in a life sketch. Yeah, Terrell noticed Beverly, death and burial. So I did not know that when I started doing this. I actually was kind of expecting to find a wife and kids and maybe a um, occupation or something. Lola noted, yes, we find the location. And that is actually particularly particularly significant in this case. Let me go to the next slide and make this a little bit larger. He, we've got a burial record. We've got another burial record. This first one is a national, I, I believe it's probably a government, if I'm not mistaken, the National Burial Index, although I'm not positive about that. These Lincolnshire burials are from church parish registers. This next one is his civil registration of death. So in other words, that's when the death was reported to the government. But it was the last one that brought tears to my eyes. So if any of you know what a workhouse was in England at that time, it was a horrible place to be. You went there if either you couldn't support yourself or your family could not support you. People who were, in fact, you probably are familiar with Charles Dickens' portrayal of people in workhouses. They were just horrible. There was abuse. There was starvation. It, it, you wanted to avoid being in a workhouse at all costs. And so for this dear Walter to end up in a workhouse and to die there at age 14, just really touches my heart because you think what that family was going through not only that they'd already had three children die and now we know of at least one other that died out of those 11 children so who says historical records are dry and boring we just learned something about this family that touches our hearts and all of us know about loss we've all lost loved ones we've all had disappointments in our lives and so we can feel empathy for this family just by looking at these records and realizing what they went through and we can put that in a life sketch so this time I'm going to go back and I'm going to click edit you notice the add uh, button is no longer relevant but we can either edit or delete and so I want to edit and again, I'm not going to be flowery here, but you could put in as much as you wanted to up to those 10,000 characters. But I just put Walter passed away in September of 1920. He was 14 years old. And I put where he was buried. That was from that uh, burial record. And so uh, you see that this is really pretty simple to write a life sketch for somebody and yet for me this was a profound experience because I really got to know this family better. So I've put this death information, I've put a reason for my change and then when I get to the bottom I click save or when I get done. I click save and so that's the great thing about these life sketches is you can put something in and then later on you can go back and revise it or add it so it's not in cement you don't have to worry oh gosh am I getting this right because it's not final you can always make changes to it as you need to okay so everybody this is your turn now to write a life sketch for someone in your tree just to offer a little bit of guidance on that or uh, just a little bit of direction maybe for the the exercise you can either write about someone you know such as a parent or a grandparent they don't have to be deceased or you could look on your fan chart and find somebody that you never met but who has sources if you want to quickly find someone with sources the best way I know of is to use the fan chart. Just be sure that you've selected sources as the type of chart that you want to view and then be sure that you choose somebody with more than zero sources and then you'll be able to go to their person page and look quickly at the sources and uh, take facts and uh, other interesting information from them. So possible information to look for would be birth, marriage, children, where they lived, occupation, and death. 
So let's take about five minutes now and in the chat window, please feel free to share what went well, what didn't go so well, and then also any questions. So I'm going to open my view of the chat window back up and if there are questions that you ask while you're writing I'll be glad to address those and people have asked some good questions in this chat I will address those after we finish writing the life sketches thank you oh my goodness Daryl that is awesome that is so cool and another viewer sent me privately, because uh, on chat you can send something privately to someone, sent me a, a live sketch that they wrote, and it looks awesome. Looks so good. Okay, let's go ahead and um, stop that time for now. But I would love for you, if you'd like to, to uh, post any questions that you had or what you thought of this experience in the chat. Uh, and not necessarily the webinar experience, although I'd like to hear that too. Would you like to do this type of things in webinars in the future? But more what I was thinking of this time is the actual experience of writing the life sketch. Uh, do you find value in it? Was it hard? Was it easy? What did you learn? Anything that you'd like to put in the chat, that would be awesome. So, I want to end the webinar with an invitation to you, and that is, you know, basically a call to action, if you will, to if you did not have a chance to finish the life sketch that you started during this little five-minute exercise, go ahead and finish that. And then also, if you'd like another um, invitation or to, to do one extra thing, then find somebody else and write a life sketch for them. So Peggy comments, let me just get the chat back over here. She said, I thought it was easy. Uh, I felt like I should be adding citations. And yes, this is actually a lot easier than a formal biography because all those citations should be in the sources. And so for the life sketch, it's just text. You can't even put in footnotes or anything. It's just a brief overview of the person's life. And, oh, Daryl, thank you for those kind comments. I appreciate that. Beverly says, I love it. I do it often. It leads me to, oh, that's a good point. It leads me to look more closely at sources. And it made you think about the person as real. And that's what we were hoping for, is for, for these people to become real to us. Because someday, it's my firm belief that we are going to meet them. And we'll know that they are real people and that actually they contributed to our lives in ways that we might not realize at this point in time. So I love that we can honor them in this way. So Ginny said, I've written life sketches through five generations. Awesome, Ginny. Using sources, husband bios, timelines, it's brought me closer to my ancestors. There we have that same theme again. It's brought me closer to my ancestors. I love this. Oh, everybody, and for those of you who may be listening to the recording, Go ahead and do these exercises anyway. I probably should have said that earlier, sorry. But um, pause the video and go through these exercises and you'll be just as much a part of this writing community as the people who were present during this webinar. Okay, so the summary for today is we talked about where you find a life sketch and what it is. We talked about why you should do one. We gave some easy tips for writing life uh, sketches along with an example, and then we did our hands-on exercise. So that brings us to the end, and does anybody have any questions that we, oh, there were questions that I did not address already. So let me scroll back up through the chat and address those, and then also if people have additional uh, questions, we would be happy to address those. So let's see, it looks like, how can we, Colby said at 429, how can we be sure that it's the same Walter Graby Chambers? And Colby, that's an excellent question. My reasoning on this was that, number one, Walter Graby Chambers was a very unusual name. And also, even if it was used across generations, it would be very doubtful that there was a Walter Graby Chambers born the same year in the same place. And so for that reason, because everything lined up and I saw no evidence that there were two men 
born the same year with that same name, I felt comfortable that those burial records were for him. So that's a very, very good uh, question because especially if the name had been something more common like Fred Taylor or Tom Smith or something, then we would have needed to do a lot more verification. The unusual name really helped in this instance for me to be sure that that was him. So it looks like Terry answered the questions about can you make changes to life sketches that others wrote and can they delete yours? Unfortunately, they can, but hopefully people would not do that. If they did, you should be able to restore it from the change log. So I'm just Scrolling down now to look and see if I've missed any other questions. Can others edit my work? Yes, Cammie, they can. And so hopefully that, that actually brings up a good point. I have seen very few people write life sketches. And so that means a lot of people aren't editing them. But then also, when I get into a life sketch that someone else has written, I just feel very leery about editing it. And I think a lot of people would feel the same way. Probably if I ever did edit a life sketch or wanted to, it would be because I saw a mistake and I would message the person first and say, hey, I noticed, for example, that you uh, wrote a life sketch about Florence Young and she's my grandmother and she actually wasn't born on this date because I have her birth certificate. Uh, maybe you'd like to change that or do you mind if I do? Just something very collaborative and respectful like that. I, I probably never would make an edit without uh, trying to contact the person first. So good. I'm very glad that you brought that up, Cami. So Patricia said, this motivated me because I can see how easy it is. That's awesome. That's what we were hoping for. And thank you, Sue. I'm glad that gave you the courage because if you said you're one who hates to write and you are totally not alone. I think that's a very common feeling. So I'm glad if this um, gave you courage for that and, and made you want to to go ahead. So it looks like that is all the questions that I see. If I've missed one, could you please repost it? And otherwise, I think we're done. And thank you, everybody, for the kind comments. Yes, Cami, good point. That's one of the sore spots for a lot of people is doing hard work and then having it destroyed through a merge. And it would be awesome if the life sketch helped to prevent that. Well, if that's all the questions, then thank you, everyone, for your questions. Thanks for the great presentation once again, Catherine. Thank um, you. And we'd just like to remind everyone about our webinar next week, um, May 2nd. That'll be on Saturday, not on Friday. And that'll be First World War Internment Camps with Hannah Bell. And so be sure to join us for that. That'll be at 11 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time instead of regular 4 p.m. time. So hope to see you there. Thanks once again, everyone, and have a great day.